Arnold, good morning, and thank you very much for your time. Yes, good morning, Sina. Thanks for having me. I hope you're well. I'm doing pretty well, thank you. Mm. How about you? Uh, by the grace, I'm same grace, same grace, I'm well. Uh, I guess, uh, have you been out recently? Um, for the past 48 hours, I've been indoor. For 48 hours now, you have been indoors? Yes. Mm. Yes. Uh, and does it, is that by directive or personally imposed? Well, the directive is for um, the state to be shut down. So the state, you know, is down and therefore... Um, most services, apart from essential services, uh, all of them um, have closed, so there's no need going out for any reason. And the street is quiet. Everybody's indoor. Okay. So, uh, I know they're speaking to us from the United States, so that's getting an idea of uh, how bad is the situation getting there in America. I've seen numbers that keep going up, but somehow I think they've been very effective at uh, perhaps checking the levels of people who are dying from the disease. Uh, what's the difference? You know, it varies from state to state. You know, um, New York, we know it's in a very terrible situation. Um, California, of course, is not um, that healthy. And, you know, other states as well, you know, so it ranges from state to state. But overall, um, we are not out of the woods. We are equally hit you know that bad so it's been managed uh the best way i believe the government can you have the first responders you know giving their best you have the private sector getting involved you know um almost everybody you know is um helping in this critical moment so yeah that's how it's been huh. so you're in sort of a lockdown yes okay now yes. I, I'm reading on, a, on the New York Times this morning, uh, the, the, the online platform, where the leading story is senators and White House agree on $2 trillion economic aid plan. $2 trillion. Is that what is needed to uh, ensure that those who are indoors continue to survive, companies survive? Is that what the economic aid plan is supposed to do? Yes, uh, primarily that, you know, uh, two school of thoughts here. There are those that are uh, saying that chunk of the money might end up in the pockets of, you know, big uh, executives in the corporate world. And uh, there are those who also believe that the, the chunk of the money is supposed to go to the, you know, the ordinary uh, worker uh, because they are those that, you know, more or less like struggle on daily basis to keep body and soul together and therefore chunk of the money is supposed to go that angle but overall yes that money is supposed to go and uh, augment you know the hardship that those who have lost their jobs those who are in the house not making any income you know world gets to make a living for for the time being so essentially what it will mean is that whilst you're home uh, they, they perhaps will be paying your salary yes yes you begin you be getting some paychecks yes you'll yes. be getting paychecks yes well, this is what we are hearing across the group. I, I'm asking you this question because uh, one of the things that we are hearing nowadays in Ghana is a lockdown. Is a lockdown. So uh, we're trying to count the cost of a lockdown. Now, what that means is essentially if we are on lockdown, government will have to be responsible for our keep. We can't raise $2 trillion. I'm not sure we need $2 trillion, though. Uh, but uh, do you think, you know Ghana, you know the states, uh, do you think that based on what you know about Ghana, a lockdown is one advisable to uh, uh, will be easy to enforce? You know, um, Senna, if I had any advice for the government of Ghana, I would say that they should lock down immediately. They are late. They are late in locking down. And they should begin to be very sincere and be proactive. They should show competence. Prior to this, they've made us aware that the economy is healthy. We have reserves. Inflation, awesome. We, to the point that planting for food and jobs, uh, whatever has yielded more than necessary, now we are exporting, so on and so forth. So this appears to be a test case. This appears to be a test case. 
for uh, uh, the government to prove a point that indeed, when we say that we're fixing the health health system, we indeed we're fixing it. When we say that we brought uh, inflation to the bare minimum, we've done it. When we say that we have enough reserve that can take us three, four months, yes, indeed, it is true. Whatever that they say, whatever policies that they put in place, it is time for them to make it a reality. Okay? And I strongly believe that uh, for whatever reason, you know, they know what is going on. That is the reason why they are being very lackadaisical. But deep down, they know that they're supposed to lock down the nation by now. They are late. Okay? They you you think late. we are late? Yes, we are late. We are late. Imagine how they started the argument. It started with one. It is under control. We are managing three. Under control, we are managing five, 17, 19, etc. Now we are at 53. What are you managing? What are you managing? Do you get where I'm coming from? So it gets to a point you have to apply just common sense. That only and, and the statistics we all know. We all know it's more than 53 now. It's beyond 53. Okay, you can't manage it this way. What you need to do is to lock down the nation, consider the loopholes, and move in every resources that you can to help the people. Like I said, we are in a state of crisis, <clears throat> and at, at this juncture, all we can do is to save lives. It is through in everything we have just to save lives. A life lost cannot be brought back. A life lost cannot be used for politics. It is somebody's parent, somebody's son, a relative that will be gone. Okay, and here we are talking of mass uh, 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 death here. Okay, and we've seen Italy, we've seen China. And even in the United States, how it's going out here. Therefore, you can't compromise and let it be business as usual because it will catch up with you. And it is catching up with everybody. Well, government's and argument... Government that done played it. Government's argument has yes, been I'm, that uh, if you look at the mm-hmm. dynamics of the outbreak in other places where it has happened, mm-hmm. uh, you're looking at China, you're looking at uh, places like Germany, among others, you realize that... The, he says the curve will go up before it flattens. That is the, that is what Kojo Ponkuma has been saying, which means that he said the, the increases are expected before they will go down. And so it is not new. What, what do you make of that session? You see, um, <laughs> Senna, it is because it, it is the very first time in a long period in the you know in this let me say this century that uh such a plague such a disease has hit the the, the, uh, the planet therefore no one was prepared no one was prepared and therefore uh, so the measures that they put in place such as locking down putting in extra health facilities that that is what has kept this okay so it is not a natural thing it, if you leave it, it will wipe everybody off. If it is going to go up and go down on its own, they leave it as it is, and you see the outcome. It is the measures that they put in place. It is because it was not expected. That's why it has risen to that level. And now competence is playing. Now commitment is playing. Now leadership is playing. That is why gradually it is coming down. It is not a natural thing that is going to go down on its own. If you leave this... It, it takes work. It, it, it's so, 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 everywhere. So your argument is that government cannot say that is a phenomenon that works by itself. It, it, it takes work, no, it, it takes planning, yes. it takes uh, leadership. Exactly. Exactly. And, and a high level of commitment in this cause. The government would have to prioritize what is most needed at this time to save lives or to do politics or for selfish interest. That's the decision that the government would have to make. And we're just referring to the high praise that our government has been giving our economy. And you think that this is the time for us to see that strength that they have been talking about. Exactly. Exactly. Over the period, the government has touted, touted itself, you know, have cleared the financial sector, uh, uh, brought inflation to a single digit, uh, planting for food and jobs, has yielded, you know, uh, and unprecedented results to the point where they are exporting so on and so forth. All the indices that Dr. Barmea and President Akufado have, you know, lamented over the period or have, you know, praised themselves over the period, it is time for us to see because you gave us the confidence for, to believe that indeed you've done a tremendous job. 
and for that we are good to go in the future. You've taken a lot of bonds, 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 bonds. Whatever you've taken, whatever investment that you've made, it is time for you to let it bear fruit for us to see. Because this is the time that we need it most. No more theories. So you believe that if they have really been doing a good work with the economy, they should have the money available to ensure that the Ghanaian stays uh, safe and also is able to feed and survive over a period of a lockdown. Exactly. Exactly. You see, uh, Senator, the argument that um, uh, people are going to, um, uh, poverty is going to kill people, so on and so forth, in lockdown, you know, it's, it's, it's a non-starter. Okay, it's a non-starter. What it is is that people have refused to seek accountability from leadership. If you ask me, if it is, this is a war, okay, an invisible war. Every nation is tackling this as a war. They are moving their best foot forward. They are moving their troops, you know, ahead to meet this battle. That's why you have frontliners in every corner trying to, you know, meet this uh, pandemic and fighting it to the core. Now, what is stopping the government by locking down the nation? What is stopping the government from bringing the military out? What is stopping the government from getting NADMO out and bringing all first respondents out in their thousands, resourcing them? Okay, we know the type of food that it is, you know, the staple foods that generally Ghanaians eat, gari, wheat, rice, yam, what, all these things. It is time for the government to get the buffer stocks up and running. Okay, it is time for every tap to flow with water. The basic necessities, it is time for the electricity to be up 24-7. And these are the commitments the government would have to make. But of course, it's going to take a lot of money. Okay, will they sacrifice to do this? Or they would want to watch people die and then they will hide it at the excuse of what they are giving so far. So that's the choice we have. If they want to do something, they can truly, truly do something. You have the private sector, they will support. When you go with a genuine concern, you have the you have the people backing you. Okay? But when you go pretending and insincerity, hypocrisy to the core, like what is happening right now, this is what happens. And I'm afraid a lot of lives will be lost. A lot of people will be uh, infected by this thing in Ghana, and not just in Ghana, Ghana, but in the continent overall, but we might not recover that fast like other developed nations are. That's what we face. So far, if you look at what is, they put on the website, there has been no recovery. There has been no recovery, which is quite alarming. Okay, so the government would have to come with a better plan, not this type of games that they're playing. Like today is what National Day of um, Fasting and Prayer. prayer. Yeah. Uh, Senna, I'm a Christian. I'm a Methodist. I believe in God 100%. But I know one thing for a fact that God hates hypocrisy. In one breath, you put God's children in uh, the front line to go and be in a position that potentially could end their lives. National Identification Authority. You have your Attorney General up in court, praying the courts to allow people to gather. Mass gathering for it has a potential of giving the, these uh, people uh, uh, con for these people contracting this virus you put God's people in such a situation and then you turn around and tell God that God save me I mean how do you reconcile this and how do you think God will, 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 will respond to this isn't that hypocrisy isn't this insincerity do you think you will have somebody like me doing this fasting and prayer I pray on my own I pray to God to save our people and save all of us but if I am to follow such insincerity, it is just a waste of time. Your attorney general is in court fighting that gets the people out to go and register. The world, God's people, the intelligence God has placed in his people in the form of doctors, experts, I tell you that no, stop it. These are the things that we did and has taken a lot of lives. You said no, let them go and die. And then you turn around and say, God help me. Reconcile that. And then let's see if this fasting and prayer will be useful. Or it's just another waste of time. Or another hogwash. The government's trying to hide 
um, um, it inability to do anything for the people by themselves. I watched uh, so, some of the parliamentary proceedings. I saw the Speaker of Parliament, what's his name, uh, Professor Michael Quay, he had a mask on. Ask yourself, the people that the president is pushing to go and register, how many of them have the mask on? Even the first responders, the doctors, those are the front line. They are even crying for support. The junior doctors, they've written that if they don't get support, they're going to lay down their tools. So where lies the priority? What's the plan? And it is a time for the president himself to be giving daily updates. This is beyond the information minister. This is beyond information minister. We need to hear the president speak every two or three hours. We need updates. We don't need rhetorics. Okay, we need proper updates. And the president shouldn't do copy and paste or uh, an edited press conference, whatever it is, and then push it out there. They need to pose questions to him. The journalists need to ask relevant, critical questions. It's time for accountability. Okay, it is the time for the president to step up, be bold, and provide our leadership. Let them challenge the status quo. Let them ask him the questions, the challenges, the solution, the time frame, the timetable, how realistic it is. Okay, and how responsible they are going to be. Because at the end of the day, they are in power. It is the taxpayers' money that is feeding them, that is maintaining them, and it is time for them to reciprocate. So we cannot compromise on this one. But from the way they are behaving and the way things are going and the insincerity, I'm afraid uh, it could be worse. But if you ask me, they have to lock down the nation now. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Uh, meanwhile, your party has come under uh, some criticism for, follow, for, for putting together a team, a team of experts that they say is, is supposed to advise the party and perhaps offer some advice for government if they do demand for it and also check government's preparedness plan. Government is unhappy with that move. What do you make of it? I would applaud the NDC for uh, being responsible. I will applaud the NDC for being there for the people. And I, I think that as a social democratic party, uh, our principle have you know spoken for itself that truly this is who we are. When it's time for us to be with the people, we rise up to the occasion and then we do what is good for the people. This is not about politics. This is not business as usual. This is NDC rising above politics and ensuring that the good people of Ghana are safe. And therefore, anything that we can do to help the good people of Ghana, that is exactly what we are doing. We are not interested in the politics of it. We are not interested in what the government would have to say and how uncomfortable they feel. As long as we are saving lives, as long as we have something to contribute that would help stabilize and move Ghana away from this particular pandemic, I believe that that is exactly what we need to do. And I will applaud President Mahama and the leadership for taking such a bold uh, uh, decision. And I know the good people of Ghana are pleased. Well, actually, the question has been, exactly what are they going to do? That has been the key question. Uh, at this point in time, do we need a seeming uh, power structure being set up by the biggest opposition party with quite the numbers and the strength? You see, Senna, it's two things. You might, you can choose to look at it from a political angle, or you can look also look at it from an angle of a group of Ghanaians. Okay, I've been reading um, yesterday that the Pentecostal Church have they've donated some amount of money. Other benevolent individuals have also, you know, uh, uh, done some donations. It is in the same spirit the same spirit of, you know, uh, 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 unison, some sense of uh, pride as Ghanaian, that national, you know, anthem that we've always been, you know, singing, it is time for us to pray. And that is exactly what is happening. Why would you have to feel uncomfortable about it? Are they not Ghanaians? Don't they have that responsibility to their people as a Ghanaian? Why are you uncomfortable? Do you have something to hide? Do you feel that you're going to be exposed you need help. You can't do this on your own. If you could, you would have done it when the first person got uh, 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 infected. Now it is 53. You need more hands on deck. So if people are coming out, and I am, I would say that President Mahama has stated that, look, I am willing to share my experience with Ebola for all of you. 
to be able to, you know, also tap into it and how it was done so that we can all move the nation forward. I come to you with a sincere heart. What has been the response from government? Quiet, lukewarm. Because they are so insecure and so uncomfortable. But the point is, you cannot hide away from this. This will expose you. This particular pandemic, that it's an, as unfortunate as it is, it is something that is a test case for this government. So for me, what the NDC has done, it is something that has to be applauded. It is something that has to be encouraged within more of those to help solve the situation in Ghana. So how do the government feel that is their own problem? Mm. It is their own emotions and sentiments. We don't care. We want to save lives. Mm. Well, I uh, thank you for speaking to us on the Ghanaian situation. But one last question. Do you think Donald Trump will survive this? <laughs> um, <laughs> so now, we'll wait and, let's wait and see. Let's wait and see. It's been interesting listening to him in this particular time. I, I wonder if there's the leadership the free world needed, what they call the free world needed at this time. You, you know, it, 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 it's, it's a two school of thoughts mm. here. You know, yeah, it's a two school of thoughts here. And um, it's not as easy as, you know, we might want to see it. Um, if here, it's a combination of both. The politics is quite, you know, uh, heightened. Uh, you have Joe Biden and, you know, the Democrats going 100%, you know, they're going in full force. And you have the Republicans also, you know, uh, pulling all the defense and make, giving the hope, so on and so forth. And as a result of that, you know, errors and other things are coming up. I wouldn't want to, you know, discuss much about it, but it's a whole different ballgame here. And I think that it is something that um, um, uh, the, the politics of Ghana would also have to uh, uh, adapt, especially from the minority side, you know, putting the government on its toes. When you put the government on its toes, the real state of what is going on comes out. Thank you very much.